Hakim Abdul Elijuan, born January 21, 1963, nicknamed The Dream, is a Nigerian-American former professional basketball player. From 1984 to 2002, he played center in the National Basketball Association NBA, for the Houston Rockets and in his last season, the Toronto Raptors. He led the Rockets to back-to-back -back NBA championships in 1994 and 1995. Elijuwan was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2008 and the FIBA Hall of Fame in 2016. He is widely considered to be one of the greatest centers, as well as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Born in Lagos, Nigeria, Elijuwan traveled from his home country to play for the University of Houston under head coach Guy Lewis. His college career for the Cougars included three trips to the Final Four. Elijuwan was drafted by the Houston Rockets with the first overall selection of the 1984 NBA Draft, a draft well known for its immense talent, which also included players such as Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, and John Stockton. He combined with the 7-foot 4-inch, 224 centimeters, Ralph Sampson to form a duo dubbed the Twin Towers. The two led the Rockets to the 1986 NBA Finals, where they lost in six games to the Boston Celtics. After Sampson was traded to the Golden State Warriors in 1988, Elijuwan became the Rockets' undisputed leader. He led the league in rebounding twice, 1989, 1990, and blocks three times, 1990, 1991, 1993. Despite very nearly being traded during a bitter contract dispute before the 1992-93 season, he remained in Houston. He became the first non-American to be an NBA All-Star and start in an NBA All-Star game, the first non-American to win the NBA MVP, the first non-American to win NBA Defensive Player of the Year, and, in the 1993-94 season, became the first player in NBA history to win the NBA's MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, and Finals MVP awards in the same season. His Rockets won back-to-back -back championships. The Rockets' 1994 championship against the New York Knicks was the first in franchise history, with Elijuwan avenging his college championship loss to Patrick Ewing. The following year, after a lackluster regular season, Elijuwan's Rockets swept Shaquille O'Neal's Orlando Magic in four games in the NBA Finals. In 1996, Elijuwan was a member of the Olympic gold medal winning United States national basketball team, and he was selected as one of the 50 greatest players in NBA history. In October 2021, Elijuwan was honored as one of the league's greatest players of all time by being named to the NBA 75th anniversary team. He ended his career as the league's all time leader in blocks, 3,830, and is one of four NBA players to record a quadruple double. Early Life Elijuwan was born to Salim and Abike Elijuwan, working-class Yoruba owners of a cement business in Lagos, Nigeria. He was the third of eight children. He credits his parents with instilling virtues of hard work and discipline into him and his siblings. They taught us to be honest, work hard, respect our elders, and believe in ourselves. Elijuwan has expressed displeasure at his childhood in Nigeria being characterized as backward. Lagos is a very cosmopolitan city. There are many ethnic groups. I grew up in an environment at schools where there were all different types of people. During his youth, Elijuwan was a soccer goalkeeper which helped give him the footwork and agility to balance his size and strength in basketball, and also contributed to his shot-blocking ability. Elijuwan did not play basketball until the age of 15 in high school, when he entered a local tournament while at the Muslim Teachers College in Lagos. Nigeria.it has been said that a coach in Nigeria once asked him to dunk and demonstrate it while standing on a chair. Elijuwan then tried to stand on the chair himself. When redirected by staff not to use the chair, Hakim could initially not dunk the basketball. Despite early struggles, Elijuwan said, basketball is something that is so unique. That immediately I pick up the game and, you know, realize that this is the life for me. All the other sports just become obsolete. College Career Elijuwan emigrated from Nigeria to play basketball at the University of Houston under Cougars coach Guy Lewis. 
Elijuan was not highly recruited and was merely offered a visit to the university to work out for the coaching staff, based on a recommendation from a friend of Lewis who had seen Elijuan play. He later recalled that when he originally arrived at the airport in 1980 for the visit, no representative of the school was there to greet him. When he called the staff, they told him to take a taxi out to the university. One of only five numbers retired by the University of Houston men's basketball team, Elijuan's number 34 hangs in Fertitta Center. After redshirting his freshman year in 1980-81 because he could not yet get clearance from the NCAA to play, Elijuan came mostly off the bench and served as the Cougars' sixth man as a redshirt freshman in 1981-82, averaging 8.3 points, 6.2 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks shooting 60% from the field in 18 minutes per game as Houston was eliminated in the Final Four by the eventual NCAA champion, North Carolina. Elijuan sought advice from the coaching staff about how to increase his playing time, and they advised him to work out with local Houston resident and multiple NBA MVP winner, Moses Malone. Malone, who was then a center on the NBA's Houston Rockets, played games every off-season with several NBA players at the Fond Recreation Center. Elijuan joined the workouts and went head-to-head -head with Malone in several games throughout the summer. Elijuan credited this experience with rapidly improving his game, the way Moses helped me is by being out there playing and allowing me to go against that level of competition. He was the best center in the NBA at the time, so I was trying to improve my game against the best. Elijuan returned from that summer a different player. He was nicknamed the Dream during his basketball career after he dunked so effortlessly that his college coach said it looked like a dream. He and his teammates, including Clyde Drexler, formed what was dubbed Phi Slama Jama, the first slam-dunking fraternity, so named because of its above-the-rim prowess. In his sophomore and junior years he helped the Cougars advance to consecutive NCAA championship games, where they lost to North Carolina State on a last-second tip-in in 1983 and a Patrick Ewing-led Georgetown team in 1984. He averaged 13.9 points, 11.4 rebounds, and 5.1 blocks in 1982-83 and 16.8 points, 13.5 rebounds, and 5.6 blocks in 1983-84. Elijuan was voted the NCAA Tournament Most Outstanding Player in 1983 when he was also named the Helms Foundation Player of the Year. After the 1983-84 season, when he was named a consensus first-team All-American, Elijuan debated whether to stay in college or declare early for the NBA draft. At that time, before the NBA draft lottery was introduced in 1985, the first pick was awarded by coin flip. Elijuan recalled, I really believed that Houston was going to win the coin flip and pick the first draft choice, and I really wanted to play in Houston so I had to make that decision, to leave early. His intuition proved correct, and the toss placed Houston ahead of the Portland Trail Blazers. Elijuan was selected first overall by the Rockets in the 1984 NBA draft. In his autobiography Living the Dream, Elijuan mentions an intriguing draft trade offered to the Rockets that would have sent Clyde Drexler and the number two pick in the 1984 NBA draft from Portland in exchange for Rolf Sampson. Had the Rockets made the deal, Elijuan states the Rockets could have selected Jordan with the number two pick to play alongside Elijuan and Drexler, who had established chemistry playing together during their Phi Slama Jama days in college. Sports writer Sam Smith speculates that such a trade would have changed league history and maybe the entire Michael Jordan legend. From 1991 to 1998, every NBA championship team included either Jordan or Elijuan. Furthermore, at least one of Drexler, Jordan, and Elijuan was involved in every NBA Finals from 1990 to 1998. Professional Career Houston Rockets, 1984-2001 Early Years, 1984-1987 The Rockets had immediate success during Elijuan's rookie season, as their win-loss record improved from a 29-53 record in 1983-84 to 48-34 in 1984-85. He teamed with the 1984 Rookie of the Year, 7 feet 4 inches, 2.24 meters, Ralph Sampson to form the original NBA Twin Towers duo. 
Olajuwon averaged 20.6 points, 11.9 rebounds and 2.68 blocks in his rookie season. He finished as runner-up to Michael Jordan in the 1985 Rookie of the Year voting and was the only other rookie to receive any votes. Olajuwon averaged 23.5 points, 11.5 rebounds, and 3.4 blocks per game during his second pro season, 1985-86. The Rockets finished 51-31 and advanced all the way to the Western Conference Finals where they faced the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers. The Rockets won the series fairly easily, for games to one, shocking the sports world and landing Olajuwon on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Olajuwon scored 75 points in victories in games 3 and 4, and after the series Lakers coach Pat Riley remarked we tried everything. We put four bodies on him. We helped from different angles. He's just a great player. The Rockets advanced to the 1986 NBA Finals where they lost in six games to the Boston Celtics, whose 1986 team is often considered one of the best teams in NBA history. Mid-career years, 1987-1993. Olajuwon, Wright, defending John Oldham on November 25, 1986. During the 1987-88 season, Sampson, who was struggling with knee injuries that would eventually end his career prematurely, was traded to the Golden State Warriors. The 1988-89 season was Olajuwon's first full season as the Rockets' undisputed leader. This change also coincided with the hiring of new coach Don Chaney. The Rockets ended the regular season with a record of 45-37 and Olajuwon finished the season as the league leader in rebounds, 13.5 per game, by a full rebound per game over Charles Barkley. This performance was consistent with his averages of 24.8 points and 3.4 blocks. Olajuwon posted exceptional playoff numbers of 37.5 PPG and 16.8 RPG, plus a record for points in a four-game playoff series, 150. Nevertheless, the Rockets were eliminated in the first round by the Seattle Supersonics, three games to one. The 1989-90 season was a disappointment for the Rockets. They finished the season with a 41-41 record and though they made the playoffs, were eliminated in four games by Los Angeles. Olajuwon put up one of the most productive defensive seasons by an interior player in the history of the NBA. He won the NBA rebounding crown, 14.0 per game, again, this time by an even larger margin, a full two rebounds per game over David Robinson and led the league in blocks by averaging 4.6 per game. He is the only player since the NBA started recording blocked shots in 1973-74 to average 14-plus rebounds and 4.5-plus blocked shots per game in the same season. In doing so he joined Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Walton as the only players in NBA history, at that point, to lead the league in rebounding and shot blocking in the same season. Olajuwon also recorded a quadruple double during the season, becoming only the third player in NBA history to do so. The Rockets finished the 1990-91 season with a record of 52-30 under NBA Coach of the Year Cheney. Olajuwon averaged 21. 8 points per game in 1990-91, but due to an injury to his eye socket caused by an elbow from Bill Cartwright did not play in enough games, 56, to qualify for the rebounding title. Otherwise, he would have won it for a third consecutive year, averaging 13.8 a game, league leader Robinson averaged 13.0 RPG. He also averaged a league-leading 3.95 blocks per game, however, the Rockets were swept in the playoffs by the LA Lakers. The following season was a low point for the Rockets during Olajuwon's tenure. They finished 42-40 and missed the playoffs for the first time in Olajuwon's career. He missed two weeks early in the season due to an accelerated heartbeat. Despite his usual strong numbers, he could not lift his team out of mediocrity. Since making the finals in 1986, the Rockets had made the playoffs five times, but their record in those playoff series was 1-5 and they were eliminated in the first round four times. Following the season, Olajuwon requested a trade in part because of his bad contract, his salary was considerably low for a top center, and his contract specifically forbade renegotiation. He also expressed displeasure with the organization's efforts to surround him with quality players. 
he felt the Rockets had cut corners at every turn and were more concerned with the bottom line than winning management had also infuriated Elijah Wan during the season when they accused him of faking a hamstring injury because of his unhappiness over his contract situation, his agent cited his differences with the organization as being irreconcilable, and Elijah Wan publicly insulted owner Charlie Thomas and the team's front office. With the 1992-93 season approaching, a reporter for the Houston Chronicle said that Elijah on being dealt was as close to a sure thing as there is. Nonetheless, he was not traded and the Rockets began the season with a new coach, Rudy Tomjanovich. Elijah on improved his passing in 1992-93, setting a new career high of 3.5 assists per game. This willingness to pass the ball increased his scoring, making it more difficult for opposing teams to double and triple team him. Elijah Wan set a new career high with 26.1 points per game, the Rockets set a new franchise record with 55 wins and advanced to the second round of the playoffs, pushing the Seattle Supersonics to a seventh game before losing in overtime, 103-100. He finished second in the MVP race to Charles Barkley with 22 votes to Barkley's 59. The team rewarded him with a four-year contract extension toward the end of the regular season. MVP in championship years, 1993-1995 Elijah Wan gained a reputation as a clutch performer and as one of the top centers in history based on his performances in the 1993-94 and 1994-95 seasons he outplayed centers such as Patrick Ewing, David Robinson, Shaquille O'Neal, and Dikembe Mutombo, and other defensive stalwarts such as Dennis Rodman and Karl Malone. Many of his battles were with his fellow Texas-based rival David Robinson of the San Antonio Spurs I and the 30 head-to-head matchups during the seven seasons from the 1989 to 1996, when both Elijuan and Robinson were in their prime, Elijuan averaged 26.3 points per game, shooting 47.6% from the field, while Robinson averaged 22.1 and 46.8%. Elijah Wan led the Rockets to a championship in the 1994 NBA Finals in a seven-game series against the New York Knicks, the team of one of Elijah Wan's perennial rivals since his collegiate days, Patrick Ewing. After being down 2-1, the Knicks took a 3-2 lead into Game 6. The Rockets were defending an 86-84 lead when in the last second, Knicks guard John Starks, who had already scored 27 points, went up for what would have been a Finals-winning three. Elijah Wan pulled off a clutch play by blocking the shot as time expired. In Game 7, Elijah Wan posted a game-high 25 points and 10 rebounds, which helped defeat the Knicks, bringing the first professional sports championship to Houston since the Houston Oilers won the American Football League championship in 1961. Elijah Wan dominated Ewing in their head-to-head -head matchup, outscoring him in every game of the series and averaging 26.9 points per game on 50% shooting, compared to Ewing's 18.9 and 36.3%. For his efforts Elijah Wan was named NBA Finals' most valuable player. Elijah Wan was at the pinnacle of his career. In 1994, he became the only player in NBA history to win the MVP, the championship, the Finals MVP and Defensive Player of the Year awards in the same season that he was also the first foreign-born player to win the league's MVP award. On December 1, 1994, Elijah Wan recorded a triple-double 37 points, 13 rebounds and 12 assists in a 113-109 win over the Golden State Warriors, but despite a slow start by the team and Elijah Wan missing eight games toward the end of the season with anemia, the Rockets repeated as champions in 1995. They were bolstered in part by the acquisition of Clyde Drexler, Elijah Wan's former University of Houston Phi Slama Jama teammate, in a mid-season trade from the Portland Trail Blazers. Elijah Wan averaged 27.8 points, 10.8 rebounds, and 3.4 blocks per game during the regular season. Elijah Wan displayed perhaps the most impressive moments of his career during the playoffs. San Antonio Spurs center David Robinson, recently crowned league MVP, was outplayed by Elijah Wan in the conference finals. Elijah Wan averaged 35.3 points on .560 shooting. Robinson's numbers were 23.8 and .449, and outscored Robinson 81 to 41 in the final two games. I in the series clinching game, Elijah Wan recorded 39 points, 
17 rebounds, and 5 blocks. When asked later what a team could do to solve Elijah on, Robinson told Life magazine, Hakeem? You don't solve Hakeem. The Rockets won every road game that series. In the NBA Finals, the Rockets swept the Orlando Magic, who were led by a young Shaquille O'Neal. Elijah on outscored O'Neal in every game, scoring more than 30 points in each and raising his regular season rate by 5 while O'Neal's production dropped by 1. Elijah on was again named Finals MVP. He averaged 33.0 points on .531 shooting, 10.3 rebounds, and 2.81 blocks in the 1995 playoffs. AS in 1994, Elijah on was the only Rockets All Star. Post Championship Period, 1995 2001 Elijah on signing autographs. The Rockets' two year championship run ended when they were eliminated in the second round of the 1996 NBA playoffs by the eventual Western Conference champion Seattle Supersonics. Michael Jordan had returned from an 18 month hiatus in March 1995, and his Chicago Bulls dominated the league for the next three years, 1996 98. The Bulls and Rockets never met in the NBA playoffs. The Rockets posted a 57-win season in 1996-97 season when they added Charles Barkley to their roster. They started the season 21-2 but lost the Western Conference Finals in six games to the Utah Jazz. After averaging 26.9 and 23.2 points in 1995-96 and 1996-97 respectively, Elijahwan's point production dipped to 16.4 in 1997-98. After the Rockets lost in the first round in five games to the Jazz in 1998, Drexler retired. In 1998-99 the Rockets acquired veteran all-star Scottie Pippen and finished 31-19 in the lockout-shortened regular season. Elijah on scoring production rose to 18.9 points per game and he made his 12th and final All-NBA team, however, they lost in the first round again, this time to the Lakers. After the season, Pippen was traded to the Portland Trail Blazers. Toronto Raptors, 2001-2002 Houston began to rebuild, bringing in young guards Katino Mobley and 2000 NBA co-rookie of the year Steve Francis. On August 2, 2001, after refusing a $13 million deal with the Rockets, Elijah Wan was traded to the Toronto Raptors for draft picks, the highest of which was used by Houston to draft boast John Nackbar at number 15 in the 2002 NBA draft, with the player having a three-year contract that would give him $18 million. In his first game with the Raptors, he scored 11 points in just 22 minutes of playing time against the Magic. Elijah on average career lows of 7.1 points and 6.0 rebounds per game in what would be his final season in the NBA, as he decided to retire in the fall of 2002, due to a back injury Elijah on retired as the all-time league leader in total blocked shots with 3,830, although shot blocking did not become an official statistic until the 1973-74 NBA season. Shortly after his retirement, his number 34 jersey was retired by the Rockets. For his NBA career, Elijah on averaged 21.8 points on 51% shooting, 11.1 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and 3.1 blocks in 1,238 career games. National Team Career in 1980, before arriving in the U.S., Elijah Wan played for a Nigerian junior team in the All-Africa Games. This created some problems when he tried to play for the United States men's national basketball team initially. FIBA rules prohibit players from representing more than one country in international competition, and players must go through a three-year waiting period for any nationality change. Elijah Wan was ineligible for selection to the Dream Team as he hadn't become a U.S. citizen. Elijah Wan became a naturalized American citizen on April 2, 1993. For the 1996 Olympics, he received a FIBA exemption and was eligible to play for Dream Team 3. The team went on to win the gold medal in Atlanta. During the tournament, he shared his minutes with Shaquille O'Neal and David Robinson. He played seven out of the eight games and started two. He averaged 5 points and 3.1 rebounds and had 8 assists and 6 steals in 7 games. Player Profile If I had to pick a center, for an all-time best team, I would take Elijah on. That leaves out Shaq, Patrick Ewing. 
It leaves out Wilt Chamberlain. It leaves out a lot of people. And the reason I would take Elijah on is very simple. He is so versatile because of what he can give you from that position. It's not just his scoring, not just his rebounding, or not just his blocked shots. People don't realize he was in the top seven in NBA history in steals. He always made great decisions on the court. For all facets of the game, I have to give it to him. Michael Jordan Elijuan was highly skilled as both an offensive and defensive player. On defense, his rare combination of quickness and strength allowed him to guard a wide range of players effectively. He was noted for both his outstanding shot-blocking ability and his unique talent for a front-court player for stealing the ball. Elijuan is the only player in NBA history to record more than 200 blocks and 200 steals in the same season. He averaged 3.09 blocks and 1.75 steals per game for his career. He is the only center to rank among the top 10 all time in steals. Elijah Wan was also an outstanding rebounder, with a career average of 11.1 rebounds per game. He led the NBA in rebounding twice during the 1989 and 1990 seasons. He was twice named the NBA Defensive Player of the Year and was a five time NBA All Defensive First Team selection. In 2022, the NBA renamed its Defensive Player of the Year award as the Hakeem Olajuwon Trophy. On offense, Olajuwon was famous for his deft shooting touch around the basket and his nimble footwork in the low post. With the ball, Hakeem displayed a vast array of fakes and spin moves, highlighted in his signature dream shake, see below. He was a prolific scorer, averaging 21.8 points per game for his career and an above-average offensive rebounder, averaging 3.3 offensive rebounds per game. Additionally, Elijah Wan became a skilled dribbler with an ability to score in face-up situations like a perimeter player. He is one of only four players to have recorded a quadruple double in the NBA, which have only been possible since the 1973-74 season when blocked shots and steals were first kept as statistics in the NBA. In 2022, to commemorate the NBA's 75th anniversary, The Athletic ranked their top 75 players of all time and named Elijah Wan as the 11th greatest player in NBA history. Dream Shake The best footwork I've ever seen from a big man. Pete Newell Elijah Wan established himself as an unusually skilled offensive player for a big man, perfecting a set of fakes and spin moves that became known as his trademark Dream Shake. Executed with uncanny speed and power, they are still regarded as the pinnacle of big man footwork, Shaquille O'Neal stated, Hakeem has five moves, then four countermoves, that gives him 20 moves. Elijah on himself traced the move back to the soccer-playing days of his youth. The dream shake was actually one of my soccer moves which I translated to basketball. It would accomplish one of three things, one, to misdirect the opponent and make him go the opposite way, two, to freeze the opponent and leave him devastated in his tracks, three, to shake off the opponent and giving him no chance to contest the shot. The dream shake was very difficult to defend, much like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's skyhook. One notable dream shake happened in Game 2 of the 1995 Western Conference Finals against the Spurs. With David Robinson guarding him, Elijah Wan performed a crossover, drove to the basket, and faked a layup. Robinson, an excellent defender, kept up with Elijah Wan and remained planted. Elijah Wan spun counterclockwise and faked a jump shot. Robinson, who was voted the 1995 NBA MVP, fell for the fake and jumped to block the shot. With Robinson in the air, Elijah Wan performed an up and under move and made an easy layup. Elijah Wan has referred to basketball as a science and described his signature move in vivid detail, when the point guard throws me the ball, I jump to get the ball. But this jump is the setup for the second move, the baseline move. I call it the touch landing. The defender is waiting for me to come down because I jumped but I'm gone before I land. Defenders say wow, he's quick, but they don't know that where I'm going is predetermined. He's basing it on quickness, but the jump is to set him up. Before I come down, I make my move. When you jump, you turn as you land. Boom! 
The defender can't react because he's waiting for you to come down to defend you. Now, the first time when you showed that quickness, he has to react to that quickness, so you can fake baseline and go the other way with your jump hook. All this is part of the dream shake. The dream shake is you dribble and then you jump, now you don't have a pivot foot. When I dribble I move it so when I come here, I jump. By jumping, I don't have a pivot foot now. I dribble so now I can use either foot. I can go this way or this way. So he's frozen, he doesn't know which way I'm going to go. That is the shake. You put him in the mix and you jump stop and now you have choice of pivot foot. He doesn't know where you're gonna turn and when. Personal life. Elijah on married Dahlia Asafi on August 8, 1996, in Houston, the couple have four children together. Elijah on also has an older daughter, Abai Solo, from a previous relationship with Lita Spencer, whom he met in college. Abai Solo represented the West Girls in the McDonald's All-American Game and played in the WNBA. In addition to English, Elijah Wan is fluent in French, Arabic, and Yoruba. He wrote his autobiography, Living the Dream, with co author Peter Nobler in 1996. During his 18 year NBA career, Elijah Wan earned more than $110 million in salary. After Elijah Wan's rookie year, he signed a five year agreement for $2.5 million to endorse a tonic shoes with a signature line, The Dream Shoe. Later in his career signed a shoe endorsement deal with LA Gear and became the face of Spalding's athletic shoe line and endorsed a sneaker that retailed in various outlets, such as Payless Shoe Source, $4.34.99. This made him one of the very few well-known players in any professional sport to endorse a sneaker not from Nike, Reebok, Adidas, or other high-visibility retail brands. As Elijah on declared, how can a poor working mother with three boys buy Nikes or Reeboks that cost $120? She can't. So kids steal these shoes from stores and from other kids. Sometimes they kill for them. Higher education. Attending college was also an important priority to Elijah on. At the University of Houston, Elijah on was a physical education major. Muslim faith. In Elijah Wan's college career and early years in the NBA, he was often undisciplined, talking back to officials, getting in minor fights with other players, and amassing technical fouls. Later, Elijah Wan took an active interest in spirituality, becoming a more devout Muslim. On March 9, 1991, he altered his name from Hakim to the more conventional spelling of Hakim, saying, I'm not changing the spelling of my name, I'm correcting it. He later recalled, I studied the Quran every day. At home, at the mosque. I would read it in airplanes, before games, and after them. I was soaking up the faith and learning new meanings each time I turned a page. I didn't dabble in the faith. I gave myself over to it. His religion dominates his life, Drexler said in 1995. Elijah Wan was recognized as one of the league's elite centers even while observing Ramadan, i.e., abstaining from food and drink from dawn to sunset during the lunar month of Ramadan on the Islamic calendar, which occurred during the playing season throughout his career. Elijah Wan was noted as sometimes playing better during the month of Ramadan, and in 1995 he was named NBA Player of the Month in February, even though Ramadan began on February 1st of that year. Post-NBA Life Elijah Wan played for 20 consecutive seasons in Houston, first collegiately for the University of Houston Cougars and then professionally with the Houston Rockets. He is considered a Houston icon and one of the city's most beloved citizens. Elijah Wan has had great success in the Houston real estate market, with his estimated profits exceeding $100 million. He buys in cash only purchases, as it is against Islamic law to pay interest. Elijah Wan splits his time between Jordan, where he moved with his family to pursue Islamic studies, and his ranch near Houston. In the 2006 NBA offseason, Elijah Wan opened his first big man camp, where he teaches young frontcourt players the finer points of playing in the post. While Elijah Wan never expressed an interest in coaching a team, he wishes to give back to the game by helping younger players. 
When asked whether the league was becoming more guard-oriented and big men were being de-emphasized, Elijuan responded, for a big man who is just big, maybe. But not if you play with speed, with agility. It will always be a big man's game if the big man plays the right way. On defense, the big man can rebound and block shots. On offense, he draws double teams and creates opportunities. He can add so much, make it easier for the entire team. He runs the camp for free. Elijuan has worked with several NBA players, including power forward Emika Okafor and center Yao Ming to in September 2009. He also worked with Kobe Bryant on the post moves and the dream shake in 2010. Elijuan worked with Dwight Howard, helping him diversify his post moves and encouraging more mental focus to in the 2011 offseason. LeBron James flew to Houston and spent time working with Elijuan. Elijuan has also worked with Omar Asik. Donatas Modi Junas, Amare. Stoudemire, Carmelo Anthony, Javel McGee, and Kenneth Farid. In an interview with The Sporting News in April 2016, Elijuan said that Kobe Bryant was his best low post student. He stated, I've worked with a lot of players, but the one who really capitalized on it the most is Kobe Bryant. When I watch him play, he'll go down in the post comfortably, naturally, and he'll execute it perfectly. Elijuan was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame as a member of the class of 2008. On April 10, 2008, the Rockets unveiled a sculpture in honor of him outside the Toyota Center. Elijuan attended the 2013 NBA draft to bid farewell to retiring Commissioner David Stern as Stern made his announcement for the final pick of the first round. Elijuan was the first pick announced by Stern back in 1984. On August 1, 2015, Elijuan made a special appearance for Team Africa at the 2015 NBA Africa Exhibition Game. He became a member of the FIBA Hall of Fame in 2016.